Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. I was just making some spearheads and I realized we've never really talked about what we mean by differentially hardened. So today I want to explain the process to you and explain when it's appropriate to differentially harden and when we want to use more complete hardening and tempering uh, processes. So this is one of our Norseman uh, spears and these are one that we're going very soon to be offering as a hardened spear instead of one that was uh, previously only available in a relatively mild form. And these ones I was quenching and hardening them using a process called slack quenching. So when you slack quench, you heat the material, the metal, up to critical temperature, which means, right, that the carbon is essentially going to be shifting into a different matrix. And then when you cool it, instead of letting, uh, so you quench it to cool it, right, which creates this new uh, uh, chemical and material structure, right? Uh, when you do that, when you're slack quenching, you let it cool incompletely. And the reason you do this is if you want a differential hardness. So if you want the edge to be quite hard and the center to be less hard, one way you can do that is by doing an interrupted quench. Quench, right? So you can see here this piece, see the different colors on here? These colors are indicative of the temperatures that I allowed the spear to cool to, right? So you can see these brown and blue temperatures here, uh, right? If you hold like a teaspoon over a, a lighter or something, right? anyone who's seen all kinds of 80s movies with drugs has seen this, right? The uh, spoon will turn blue and brown, right? That's the heating up of the metal, right? So that color indicates how hot it's getting. So with this material, I wanted to get the edge hard, which happens by taking it up to critical temperature and then quenching it, cooling it really quickly, freezes that, that structure. So it's nice and hard. But then I wanna lift it out of the oil and allow this color to creep back out to the edge. And as this is changing color, it's tempering, right? Which means that it is getting a little softer again and acquiring some spring uh, uh, tendencies, attributes, right? Uh, so when you just quench something, quench it super hard, it's really brittle. You have to temper it to let it get uh, essentially a spring uh, attribute to it. So on this, you're gonna have in the center of this spear, a softer central ridge with a harder edge on it. And we use this on these and on our Dane axes as a way to harden the edge because it was the historical way that most hardened weapons of this type uh, were created. So you'd have a softer core and a harder edge. Now on swords, right, we don't do a slack quench. We do a modern high-tech quench because today with homogenous steel blades, you want the whole thing hardened and tempered the whole way through. So we use a molten salt process uh, for that, that makes the entire sword have relatively the same hardness, so there aren't any weak spots. But something like a spear, right, where this is half an inch thick, you're not going to be bending this and springing it back together, right? It uh, is perfectly appropriate to use this kind of medieval quench called a slack quench, right? So differentially hardened, often accomplished through slack quenching. All right, thanks a lot.